Hey guys, I'm here with uh, Rob from All About Beardeds, and uh, I had this question when I was looking at the bearded dragons about mealworms. And uh, a few people have asked me this question too, is do you feed mealworms to bearded dragons? So this is actually a really great question. It's a very common question, and what I have here is I'm going to actually show you the difference between a mealworm and a zoophoba or superworm. The mealworm is a much smaller, this is actually an adult mealworm, it's a much smaller animal. Um, these are both beetle larvae. The problem with the mealworms is, number one, they're very readily consumed by baby bearded dragons. So they like to eat them, and it's a common association that because the animal likes to eat it, it's good for it. But the mealworms are just basically pure chitin, which is hard exoskeleton. And the bearded dragons have a very, very short intestinal tract. So what happens is, as the bearded dragons consume more and more mealworms in a short feeding, it can be one feeding, the intestinal tract will actually get bound up. And at a certain stage, it will stop pulsating, and the dragon will actually become food-bound and basically get chronically constipated and can pass away. So we never, ever, ever feed a bearded dragon of any size, a mealworm, but we can feed it a superworm, which is a zoophoba. Okay? Now, one worm that is very readily available um, and very, very nutritious, full of calcium, highly recommended for baby bearded dragons is a phoenix worm. This is a soldier fly larvae. Um, kind of resembles a maggot, but as you can tell, it has no chitin. No exoskeleton, it's almost just pure, nutritional, soft, meaty content. That's more ideal for a baby bearded dragon because we're dealing with that very small intestinal tract. Okay? Now, of course, my lizards aren't going to eat. They've been feeding all day. Um, I've also noticed that throughout the day, you don't have any bearded dragons in your bins. Why is that? Oops, sorry. No. Well, we did really good. I actually brought, um, most of these lizards here are holdbacks from last year, except this clutch. And what I do is I hold back about 30% of my animals, usually the, the prettiest, highest end. And then I choose from those animals to breed from, and then I bring the ones I'm not going to breed from to my first show. To kind of give people an opportunity to buy a lizard that isn't a hatchling, and it's been raised a little more. Plus it gives me a chance to kind of see what the dragons are morphing into. So there's so many different varieties nowadays, and within the variety, the individual dragon changes. So that's kind of how I educate myself Nice. on what my dragons are doing throughout time. So like you can see, this is a four-week-old hatchling. In here we have about a four-month-old bearded dragon. I know it's all your... considered almost a sub-adult, and then these are already at adult breeder oh, stage. Right. I notice all of your uh, reds and oranges and uh, are pretty much gone. Yes. They went quick. They sell the quickest. Um, you had a good amount. <laughs> I also do not, I display the animals on sand at reptile shows um, because it's literally easier to scoop them out like a cat box, but I don't keep any of my animals on sand. They're all kept either on paper or in these plain plastic tubs. Once again, because of getting bound. They can eat sand over time, you know, they can eat a piece of leafy green with water on it that gets a bunch of sand on it. And because you're dealing with that short intestinal tract again, it doesn't take much compaction, impaction is what it's called, for the animal to just, for its intestines to stop doing the pulsing that intestines do naturally, and then they die. Nice. So we want to keep them off sand. Um, these are all things we've learned over the last 10 years, um, you know, through trial and error. Because these animals were exported from um, Australia, we basically had to educate ourselves as breeders. Um, and we did it through making a lot of mistakes. And, you know, the, the lizards being produced in this country now are probably some of the finest animals as far as husbandry and genetics goes in the world. We're actually doing things in this country that they're not even doing in Australia. Yeah, sure. Right. So. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Definitely. Thanks, Justin. Yes. Check them out. It's always good to stay informed. Stay away from the mealworm.